Okay, so uh, now we're gonna do something fun. We're gonna play a bit of musical chairs. And uh, Ian's gonna come sit over here. And uh, I'm gonna call on stage our next speaker, who um, in a way requires little introduction, but Will I Am is a singer, songwriter, and seven-time Grammy Award-winning artist. He's a true maverick and polymath. He leads businesses at the nexus of technology, music, innovation, and, and fashion. As founder and frontman of the Black Eyed Peas, he has sold 31 million albums and 58 million singles worldwide. He is also known as an innovator in technology and fashion, fashion ventures uh, and worked with Ian for some time at Beats um, by Dr. Dre. And so I thought, as opposed to having me sit on here and moderate another conversation, Ian would do an amazing job at talking to Will about you know, what he sees happening at this really intersection between music, technology, and fashion. And let me tell you, maybe my highlight of all of the moments that happened last night was I snuck back in to the uh, dinner room where we all had dinner, and while all of you were like partying on the dance floor, um, I went in to steal some of those pom-poms. Uh, I never actually managed to get any of the pom-poms because I walked in and Will was sitting there with all of these future voices surrounding him and they, had, they were in the middle of a three and a half hour conversation about technology and fashion. And that's this guy, he is really interested in this space, he's really interested in young people and he's really interesting to all of you. So please welcome Will I Am. How you doing? Chill. So that was good. That was good. Was it all right? You dropping bombs. That was good. <laughs> Relax a little bit now. Yeah. What are you focused on? Focus is a is a tricky word with Will. So that's a trick question, actually. I'm focused on what's coming. Just trying to decipher what the next form or form less it is. Um, I always. Since I met you, before I met you, I've always been interested in pattern matching, whether it's in making music or, you know, trying to get the barometer on, on pop culture. And because of that, I'm just really, truly fascinated by technology, the folks that make it, um, how it's changing the world and not changing the world in areas where technology is a void. Um, oops. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really interested in, in, in the coming. But, but unlike most people who talk about all of this, you actually do a lot. So what, I mean, you just, the headphones are around your neck. Tell us a little bit about the space in LA, how you develop ideas, and then which ones of those ideas actually come, make it to market. So when we sold Beats to HTC, in 2012, mm -hmm. um, I was consulting and working at Intel um, as a chief innovative officer, kind of, and I was just consulting for them. They had a bunch of um, think tank sessions and futurists, and I was a part of that little futurist you know, cluster of folks. And when we sold Beats to HTC, I took my earnings and started my own company. And so I got this facility in Hollywood that's cross-disciplinary where there's developers and content makers, designers, um, all working together around um, this AI. So we developed a voice operating system from a team that I acquired, with a team that I acquired in Bangalore, India. And then when we sold Beats to Apple, I took my earnings and acquired a team from Israel, Tel Aviv, and we combined the AI stuff that they were doing in Israel with the OS stuff that we were doing in Bangalore. And so our team, from fashion designers to hardware manufacturers to content makers, are just surrounding this AI thing and just th throwing a whole bunch of ideas at it, and it will, it will launch soon. And you, I, I just want to try to paint the picture for everyone, because you talk about it like it's a normal thing. But what happened is, you instead of taking your money and buying a house and a car and maybe building a home studio, 
you actually built basically an incubator. So yes, there's a place for you to make music in there, and, but there's also, there's, there, there are students and scientists and, and real, real R&D going on in that place. Yeah, like say for example, you're in Brooklyn. No, Brooklyn's a bad, bad example because that's pretty hip. Say for example, you're in Chicago, where it's tough right now, and rap, is what you want to do, but you know getting a record deal, I don't even know how you make money there the way Kanye did in the past. So maybe a record contract is not the thing that you're looking after. And then you see like Kanye and Rihanna and everybody with their shoe deals. So in your head, oh, maybe I could get like a, a shoe contract. How do you get a shoe contract? Like you have to build up your name like Kanye to get attention from Adidas, Nike, and Puma, and stuff like that, so good luck. And then maybe, oh shit, this new emoji shits are happening, ooh, I wanna give me, I'm an emoji too. Like, where the fuck do you go? <laughs> the emoji like, so store. The only thing the record company told you is, come and get a deal with us, if you make content, we'll distribute it. But when it comes to making stuff, where do you go? If you wanted to design a shoe, where do you make it? Where do you go? Well, I don't know where do you go. If you wanted to make an app and you're from the hood, where do you go? I don't know where do you go. Where do you go? I don't know. San Francisco to hang out at the coffee shop, San Francisco. Where do you go? So I want to have a facility that if folks wanted to make shoes or glasses or headphones or a jacket, they just go in my building. You want to make an app, you go to that side. You want to make some shoes, you go upstairs. You want to make a song, you go over there. If you want to do a video, you go over there. You want to edit it, go over there. So where it's like new age. If you're 15 years old, you don't know the difference between a record company and a shoe company because Kanye and Rihanna told you it's the same people selling it. <laughs> right? If you're, at, if you're at 21 years old and you're banking on your phone and getting an Uber on your phone and taking pictures on your phone, then What's Kodak, what's a taxi, and what's all these other companies when everything's from the same device? We're all using the same fingers to, to navigate through it. Oh shit, where do I find developers at that can help me build my UX and my UI and the platform and shit? Where do you go? It isn't like there's a company to go to if you're just a doer and a thinker that wants to take your ideas and make them real. So there's a big, huge void there. And, and, and that's what I wanted people to know, is this place is real, and there are people coding, there are, and there are also sewing machines upstairs. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a full, you, you built the means of production. So how do you get from there to headphones, and what does that have to do with AI? So you said the internet. So imagine it's 1997, and a futurist said, yo, check this out, man. Is shit going the internet's going to come? <laughs> And then 10 years from now, a phone's going to come out, and this is your stylus. And then 20 years from now, you're going to be using this thing, maybe your thumb or your finger. You swipe it, and a freaking car comes, picks you up. No more waiting around for a taxi in New York. A person in New York will be like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Look, seriously, man. The world's going to change, man. And if you want a fucking house and shit, use that same finger. You can get a house anywhere, bro. It's like Airbnb. Motherfuckers is going to loan you their house. <laughs> What do you mean people gonna loan you their house? Yeah, man, motherfuckers gonna leave their house, they gonna, people can have houses, and you just go stay in their house when they ain't there. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here, that ain't fucking 2017. Imagine that in 1997, someone telling you that that's what the future is gonna be. What the internet is gonna do to culture. Imagine it's 1997, somebody says, yo, man, you're gonna have this slice of glass with a camera on it, you can take pictures of everything, man, your food and shit. You're going to tell people where you at. They're going to fucking be able to check where you at. They're like, hell, get the fuck out of here. My wife don't even do that shit. Right? Imagine that's what somebody was telling you the world was going to be at, like in 1997. So here we are, 2017, almost. In the next 10 years, we are going to have something in our lives that we're all missing right now. We have the internet. But there's so much stuff on the internet, you don't have time to freaking go through everything the internet has to offer. There's so many apps that people aren't even downloading on the app stores, whether it's Android or iOS. Good luck trying to find and discover stuff. You don't have enough time in the world to go through all the stuff that's out there. 
That's because we're missing something. The internet doesn't know me. It knows pieces of me. Google knows a piece of me. Facebook knows a piece of me. Apple knows a piece of me. My shit is everywhere. And, I try, and we all try to protect our identity so much, but we give all our data away. Like, that's kind of crazy, because our data is more us than our identity. I am not 549 blah, 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 blah. That's not my, that, I'm not my social security number. I'm not before 77, I'm not my ID, I'm not my passport number, I'm really not my bank account. I am the, I'm the data that explains who I know, where I've been, what I'm doing, my possibilities, my interests, I'm my data. My data knows, I, companies know more about me based on my spell check, my history, my cash, than I know my doctor knows about me. So with that, we, there's something that's gonna be introduced in our lives that is more dear to us than our families, and that's this AI engine. We're all gonna have this AI, a personal thing that helps us save time, because that's the only thing we have left, is how do we get time back? We have so much freaking disruption, so many you know, new technologies, but time is still time. So how do we maximize time? Am I gonna have to search the internet or is the internet gonna come to me? The magnet will be introduced where all my data is going to work for me. Where my magnet, my AI goes out and finds everything that's synonymous with my data behavior, other data doppelgangers to serve me up stuff that's great for me. So I'm excited about that thing. I'm excited about the thing that's coming. And, and what, what is that? How do, how do the headphones okay. relate so, to that? So if swiping was for light, then sound is for, you know, it's audio devices for your ear. Wait, we, they mastered this one. A light, you swipe on it, la, 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 or maybe a freaking trackpad or a mouse. So for a desktop or a laptop, you had a trackpad or a mouse. For a slice of glass, you use your finger. For audio, it's just voice. So the most personal thing is something that goes in your ear, something that you talk to, that no one else hears but myself. So tomorrow looks like, right now you have jacket, buttons on it, lapel, all these things that are just because of yester. That jacket tomorrow is designed with audio input, and that is your device. No phone, no glass, just awesome jackets. Think about it. I walk around, we all walk around, get our shoes all dirty, we walk around the fucking earth, stepping on shit, stepping on God knows what. We go into our house, some coaches you take your shoes off. Most of us, we don't take our shoes off. We just take that shitty ass shoe into your house, put it on God knows what, and then at the same time, we wash our underwear. Stuff that actually doesn't touch anything. <laughs> we wash our pants, we wash our shirts, <laughs> we don't wash our shoes or our jackets. Our shoes are the dirtiest and we don't wash it. It actually doesn't make any sense at all No. in the world of fashion. So why don't we wash the dirtiest thing? It's kind of crazy, actually, if you really break it down on some simple shit. <laughs> so this means to tell you that the behavior would suggest that you're gonna have awesome jackets that you probably don't have to wash all the time because we don't wash them anyways. That is our connectivity. And one day we're gonna be walking in the world and say, remember we used to have jackets that didn't do shit? <laughs> Can't believe we used to fucking have jackets that didn't do shit. It's crazy. And w should um, should the fashion industry be scared of 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 what's coming, or should they collaborate to define it? Yeah, they should, because fashion doesn't have technologists. You tell me what technologist works in the world of fashion, and what fashion company has real technology developing IP, AI, and shit like that doesn't exist. So yeah, I'll be scared shitless. And should they collaborate with tech, or should they build it inside? They should build it. Don't collaborate. You build it. Tell me a bit about how you've, how you've built what you've built. Is it, is it through collaboration, or through outside investment, or like how do you think about your own independence in this world? I mean, obviously, you're con you've been connected with, with Beats, but you also have, have your own you know, standalone products. So I'm a weirdo, meaning that people look at me and they probably second guess me or laugh after I leave or maybe they have a conversation and they, you know, and they're really nice in, when we're together and then they walk away and they say, I don't really get the guy, la 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 la. 
Nobody here is going to do that today. No, they do that. You got to know that. You have to know that that's what happens when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay, because that happened to me before in my past job. I'm like, yo, I want to do music. I got this idea. Right? I'm not the best singer. I'm not the best pianist. I just have cool ideas on how to make songs that everybody wants to sing. Right? I'll go out and pattern match, like, oh, wow, I think people are going to like this. Oh, wow, let's make something for a bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, graduation, wedding, da-da-da, da-da-da. I, I try to aim at filling voids. So I'm a believer, and I believe in putting teams together, whether it's for songs, whether it's for political campaigns, and the likes of Obama campaign and Hillary campaign and Intel and Beats and now Apple, they value, you know, dot connectors and problem solvers, people that are trying to solve riddles. So I, I wanted to believe in my ability to create my own team. So I went out and invested in myself and went out and, um, uh, and did that to the tune of Salesforce coming in and investing in the company. Mark Binioff was the first believer. And then from Mark Binioff, um, Rad McCoons, you know, a bunch of folks uh, in the States, and then Lee Kashin with Selena Chow in Hong Kong, and then Francois Pinot in the world of fashion. I, two years ago, I, I called Salma Hayek and said, hey, I'd really like to meet with, with your husband. Will, what the fuck? You cannot, you know. And I love her. She uses the word fuck so awesomely when Salma speaks. <laughs> so she says, you better not be fucking late. You know, I don't like to step over certain boundaries. I'm setting up a meeting with them. What the fuck are you going to talk to them about anyways? I don't want to be you know, blinded. So I told her the idea. Will, this is great. So I sat with Francois and I told him, you know, the idea that fashion should prepare for tomorrow. If the world of tech has nabbed the guy from East Saint Laurent and the world of tech has nabbed the girl from Burberry and the world of tech nabs, who are they going to nab next? More importantly, what is fashion doing to prepare? Because tomorrow is totally different. It's safe to say that maybe a tech company's fashion tomorrow not a fashion company tech. Because to the youth, holding up phones, look at it, we're just holding phones up. We don't even want to keep them in our memories. We don't want to have memories and exchange and tell them ourselves. We'd rather take a picture of a, uh, and hold it up. Fashion didn't tell us to do that. Technology did. They didn't even have to have commercials to market it. It's this thing happening called culture, and culture is more powerful than marketing. So. I just wanted to, I, I, I'm a fucking believer, bro. I, I like, I see things and I want to make them real. No matter how, how hard it takes, no matter what obstacles, no matter how many embarrassing meetings I have to imagine <laughs> is happening when I leave. <laughs> doesn't matter. I'm a doer and a freaking make it happener. And more importantly, realize who the leaders are. And that's the people over here, the, the young ones. Folks that are out there just sponging up, thirsty, and just want to engage in conversation. And those conversations are what lead to innovation. Just, and everyone else just has a stick up of their ass and never wants to engage because they're so hypnotized by their past success. You just want to fucking, yo, so what? Tell me what you know. Oh, shit, here's what I know. Sponge, 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 sponge. Getting little nuggets. I, I, I hunt for nuggets of knowledge and then you know, rinse them out in areas of drought, and those droughts are inner cities. Kids are so behind. Right, it's safe to say that that iPhone 7, 20 years from now, when it's iPhone 27, will be smarter than a 27-year-old. Because that does not require Congress to, you know, okay it's it, how fast it evolves. It's kinda inhumane that we are not protecting the youth by investing in their education, right? So that is the thing that worries me. So yeah, we're doing AI, but I also have a school in the ghetto that I'm from where we're teaching kids computer science and robotics so they understand what's coming so they can start training these algorithms 
And, you're, and, gi- and you're giving them the means of production like you've built a means of production. You, just, you want to start a movement. I can't be the, the anomaly or the freaking enigma. I mean, you could say my enigma, <laughs> but I don't want to be... I want to have a whole bunch of folks that come from where I come from that are dreaming down this path because it's not happening. It isn't like it's mandatory for kids to take computer science in third period starting in sixth grade. That's not what it is, right? The likes of Apple, Google, Microsoft combined is a multi-trillion dollar industry. But every single high school has basketball, football, and baseball. Only three companies benefit from that. That's NBA, NFL, and MLB. And they don't have the market share of Apple, Google, and Microsoft. And it isn't like they're playing sports for health reasons. It isn't, it isn't, that's, not, that's not the reason why there's football in every high school. It isn't like my sister is going to play for Manchester United or the Rams, no matter what, what football you're talking about. So yeah, there's inequality in tech, but there's inequality everywhere in every single fabric of culture. So you want to start inspiring kids to dream down this path of tech and, and disrupt and be a part of the conversation and solve right. problems. Got to wrap it up. Thank you for inspiring us. Thanks, guys.